TBSW episode 112. Tinder Peaches background checks. Taiwan pineapples. The worst data sharers. French drug raid. A new snoring aid. All coming up on TBSW episode 112. Peaches and cream. <laughs> the B side word. Welcome to the B-Side Word. We are a group of friends from around the world where we share our thoughts and opinions on interesting articles. I am Devin and I'm here with Emma. Howdy. I'm here with CJ. Hello. And I'm here with Alexander. Oh, hi. Can you go? How low, How low? can you go? Oh, hi. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, are we the only ones on the same page? <laughs> what, what's happening? I, yeah, I, I got you. <laughs> 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 was I was I sounding low? Was I doing it low and then Wait, going what? high? No, what? No, it was, it was, it was CJ. CJ's, CJ said, <laughs> "How low?" low. <laughs> so I said, "Can you go?" Oh, How okay, low? okay. So, Can you so, go? So, so what happened is, I was gonna say hello, <laughs> uh, but I said, "How?" And then I was, uh, yeah, and and then you kind of threw me, <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, "Oh, uh, <laughs> so I kind of did in between both. <laughs> Yeah. CJ, CJ's like a Pentium one. And the process it was too much information for him to process. <laughs> I was like, what's a Pentium one? Yeah, oh dear. I got you, That's I got a you. I got you. Old people's joke. I it is an you, old I people's joke. Um I wanted to bring up something that me and Emma were talking about during the week briefly, and I wanted to ask you question uh, ask you this question because uh, maybe I'm just paranoid, right? So after I did a number two from the toilet. I washed my hands thoroughly. Huh? Hold on, hold on. Way too much information. <laughs> <laughs> I washed my hands thoroughly, and then I wiped it. I like I dried it up, and then I went to the kitchen to make myself a sandwich. And then I paused because I was like, "How long can I can I make a sandwich now? Like, is my hands clean? Like, I've washed it. Is my hands clean? Do I have to wait?" So I wanted to ask you guys. I wanted to ask How you. How is waiting going to make it more clean? Because then I was going to say, the moment that you wash your hands is the cleanest they're going to be. Yeah. Like they're not going to get cleaner over time. I know, but is, yeah. it, is it clean? Is I, it, like, I have is to it... agree with you, Dev, because I've also had that thought go through my head too. Like, so you're happy as Dev. soon as you wash, you've, you've wiped, you've washed, you, you just, and then you just go, I'll make a sandwich. Yeah. It's the time yeah. to make the sandwich after you I, wash your hands. I tend to double wash or triple mm, wash. I don't know. I don't know if that's... How clean are your hands? <laughs> Sometimes they start to like... You know when you stay in the pool too long? You know what happens? <laughs> you they yeah. start to them, prune fingers. You've the pruned them, fingers. Yeah, you've clean, you cleaned them to the point of pruning your fingers. Yeah. No. I have. But I haven't got OCD. I, I tend I swear. to wash my oh, hands. Probably no, you don't. More than the average person. So you're saying, CJ and Alexander, you're saying as soon as you wash your hands, you've done like I'm talking like you've done the number two, you've done the biz, you've you know you cleaned up, and you've washed it, and you're gone. Yep, it's clean. No, you, that thought of you doing that poo and all that business is like no, that it's clean, it's clean, it's ready to go. You you're happy to slap on the well, okay. lettuce and the and the. I'm not gonna sit here and say. If you ran my hands through a scanner, they'd be the cleanest things on earth. As in, <laughs> yeah. I'm not saying I'm bad at washing my hands, but my point being more that they're not going to get cleaner. So mm. if you can't do it after <laughs> washing your hands, why does it make sense to be able to do it later? I don't know. I don't but know. But I get, I understand yeah. where you're coming from. It's a, it's, a, I don't know. That's why, I, that's why I brought it to the table because I was thinking maybe it was an okay. irrational thought. And like you, you're making it sound like an irrational thought, but at the same time, I think I have to wait until the image of me pooing has left my brain for me so to. It's more, a, it's more a psychological wait time than it yes. is. A <laughs> yes, yes, psychological wait time. wait time. Yes, you got to cleanse the psyche. Say, I, yes, it, the clean the brain are, are you your hands as well properly? as the hands. Hey, so right, so your hands. Are you your hands you're, you're going through. Like yeah. you're, you're going through a good hand there, wash. You're getting in there. You're getting you know, in there. You're giving you've it. You've done all your. Yeah. I'm like a surgeon when I um when I you know the surgeon I even lift up my I have scrubs <laughs> I lift up my things and I start to I so go then why don't you use the clean. plastic gloves to make the sandwich 
Oh. I, I haven't got it. I haven't got it on hand. Yes, we do. <laughs> uh, do we? Yeah. Well, oh. you would need to put it on hand <laughs> to make the sandwich. Because I. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> Ten points. I agree with you on this because, like I was saying, I typically, I don't like my hands being in any way dirty and I wash, probably wash my hands more than the average person. And I have the gloves because the set things that I will not touch without them just because of the, um, uh, like for instance, chicken, any mm. type of chicken, chicken, I have to wear gloves. What? Because, yeah, I can't prep chicken, raw chicken, without wearing gloves. I I never knew. I never, I never thought about it. But it ever since Emma's entered my life, there's there's a few things that I just go, I can't get out of my head now. <laughs> I like the whole chicken thing. It's like I see chicken juices on the thing. I'm like, oh no, gotta wipe it, gotta yeah. wipe it. And oh, I'm definitely. Like, but you can't wipe it with a normal thing because. Because I remember, Alexander, when we were growing up, mum was really you, particular you, about raw chicken to the point where she even, we watched this thing and they used UV lights. And right, this is what we sh she showed me. So, for example, <laughs> let's say that Emma's, you're... But just but hold on, hold Wait on. Wait a before, second. Before you, Wait. before you go, Emma, before you go, I just want to let everybody who's listening know, Emma's making this up. My mum's never said this. No, Continue. I will tell you. We watched this video and it was because this is why she never did it ever. So imagine you've got your chicken in its container, plastic container that you've bought from the grocery store. <laughs> right. Then imagine you just pour the juices, the raw chicken juices from that container into the sink, right? You pour it into the sink and then you turn your tap on. Those juices splatter <laughs> and they ran a UV light in a dark room to show you the extent of the juice splatter. Oh. And then also of where your hands are like touched from there. So it went to the fridge, the taps everywhere, the surface, and it was all raw chicken juice. It was do you know, so do you, know, frightening. do you know why I say my mum's never said this? Why? Because this is something, this is a conversation I even had with my mum six days ago as recently as that because i was cooking a chicken and my mum having worked for backstory <laughs> she worked for a company where the owner of her company also was the owner of the chicken factory the chicken yeah. slaughter factory yeah that supplies um, all which the was KFC's housed chickens. the next door as well across the street from where we grew up so we had all those beautiful smells all the time um she learned from that because they used to get chicken in abundance. The one thing you don't do when you have a chicken is wash it. Yeah. Because when you get a chicken, a raw chicken, if you clean it, you're actually going to make it dirtier than when you got it. That chicken that sat in those same juices that Emma's talking about. Yeah. So how are those juices dirty? No, the if juices the carry the... Dirty, no, no, it still carries a risk of salmonella on those juices because I watched that video with her. Now, mum never used gloves to, Wait, to prep her chicken. When did you watch this video with her? When I was a child. On on what did you watch this video? Bearing in mind YouTube didn't exist when you Mandela were a child. Effect. It was on the TV. 100% Mandela <laughs> Effect. It was on the TV. It was a Mandela Effect. And she showed me. Did we, did we have it on VHS? <laughs> like, what? <laughs> it was on the TV. We watched nah, it together. No, nah, it's Mandela Effect. Oh, Man, my goodness. You guys. I you guys rented some shit movies. All right. Can I just call oh, my no. mum? Let's let's bring my mum into the the mix. Hang on. Calling mum. And I got I, I, I got to say this. You now, two my mom never should never actually sh should wore should never leave each other. You two. Because you are both <laughs> as crazy as each other. You are literally oh, perfect for hi, each mom. other. Now we are on the podcast live. And I life. have a question. <laughs> it's a little. Okay. Okay. Do you remember when I was a child and we were cooking, like we used to cook chicken, right? I used to do the Sunday lunches and yes. we watched, uh, we watched something on the TV and that something was about raw chicken and it was about the splatter that can go all over the sink and they used the UV light in the dark room and it showed yeah. all of this. You remember? Yeah. Yeah, I told you! 
Alexander said I made it up and Devin said it was Mandela effect and that this didn't happen. Thank you so much. No, 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 true. Wait, 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 it, hold on. Yeah, I do remember watching it. Oh, Clarify, clarifying saved. question. You've got to ask saved. clarifying questions. Okay, tomorrow. wait, wait. Alexander has a question to clarify. So the clarify, what was the origin of this whole thing? I can't remember. Washing chicken. Well, not really. Washing chicken. No, it wasn't. It wasn't. It was just how I use gloves. To... Oh, gloves. You shouldn't Using... wash chicken. Oh, shouldn't wash chicken. You yeah. shouldn't wash chicken. Should you wear gloves while prepping chicken? Well, I just said that I have this weird image ever since I was a girl from watching that. And I'm very p particular with chicken and where I wear gloves when I prep raw chicken now just because of the salmonella on my the fingers. Most, yeah, the most important thing about preparing raw chicken is yeah. to have it on any raw meat, any meat, do it on a separate board. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, well. Hands up if you are on a dating app. Okay. <laughs> I'm not. Okay, okay no, the only not. one that put the hands up was the one that's married. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, this is actually kind of cool. Dating apps such as Tinder are now going to, you will, hopefully you will be able to run a background check on your potential date. So... Well, like police check and stuff. <laughs> hold on. Literally. What? Hold on. Hold on. I, before you keep going, Dev, talk me through your reaction. Oh, well, like... Well, he, I don't, he has to get off like, Tinder. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to find that he's got a wife and kids. <laughs> I mean, like, well, what checks are you going to be able to do? Like, um, the his um, police history? Check. No, no. That they are putting these checks in place so that p women stop being attacked by men. I, I Why is it you know so much about this, CJ? <laughs> CJ knows a lot about <laughs> okay. everything. I, I read a lot of weird stuff. And I don't know why I keep reading it. Just, <laughs> but CJ know, does have a lot of it. knowledge on a lot of different topics. Um, yeah, so Garbo is the name of a, a non-profit. And it's it basically collects public records um, and reports of violence, abuse, arrests, convictions, restraining orders, harassments, and other violent crimes. And they are going to be letting um, these dating apps use that data. It's not going to be free. They're still working out how much the cost is, but they don't want it to be, they want it to be something that most users will be able to use. Um, they're not going to publicize drug possession charges uh, and a big reason for that is due to the disparity in black arrests over drugs. Um, yeah, they're it's, not going to. It's really mainly um, assaults and stuff like that. And they're not also going to disclose traffic violations, but it's just stuff like your violent crimes. And if, Garbo exists basically as a way for to show who is, I guess, dangerous or violent. Um, and in, they they try and protect the women basically. Hmm. I mean, it's good. Now, is this also going to be useful for the men? All you need is a name and a phone number, so anyone can do it. Well, First name like, and phone number. But that doesn't. I, like, anyone there's can some just crazy use, women out there as yeah. well. No, but you can use like someone your mate that's got a clean record. Yeah. There's always going to be a way around it, but it's actually a good step forward. I mean, but then you're traceable, then, right? Yeah, but if you're, you're trying to then. go on a date mm -hmm. with someone, you're probably going to give them your mobile number. Like if you want things to pursue further. Yeah. Maybe this yeah. is for, for like if, you, if you've been on a date and you're like, oh, I kind of like this person. Uh, let me get some more info. I mean, if it keeps, it keeps women safe, all the, you know. Yeah, but, yeah, but as you said, you already found the way around it. Um, you just use your mate who's got clean records um, um, name. Yeah, but I mean, you can, that's just traceable. That, there's a trail then in there. CJ. Yeah, but the tr the troll happens after the assault. To sort of back up what CJ was saying, <laughs> this isn't a this would be after you've met and then you want to check them out. You would do it before you meet the person to make sure they're safe to actually meet them. You would hope so, but then you'd need their number. So unless they're going to give you their number up front then you wouldn't be able to do it. You need just a first name and a, tel and a mobile number. 
now to give you an, an, an eye into the dating app world because quite rightly you've never been on a dating app at least <laughs> i hope not uh, <laughs> Yeah, you 100% give your number to someone before you meet them because yeah, otherwise think. you're relying on let's meet here at this time and then never communicating with them until you meet. So this is like, perfect you, then. I See, I have, I have, there's something instinctive inside of me and it's hard to explain as to why I think this is weird. Even though I think there's merit as to the logic behind it. Yeah. So trying to, I've been trying to tease it out in my brain, but my thought is, is something more along the line of this should be done by Tinder, not by the individual people. Because I think it's just weird when you get too much information on people on a personal level. Like you shouldn't yeah. have access yeah, to right. yeah. everything about a person before I mean, you meet them. Like, I, mean, I understand this but from the a tech, point of view. But, but this website doesn't find... Um... But like they only see stuff that everyone can see anyway, right? It's public records anyway, but so they don't. It's only public records, and it's only their whole goal. Garbo's whole goal is to prevent gender-based crimes in the digital age. Mm. So, no, so I then, get that. I get that it's public record, but at the same time, it's public record that no one's been accessing. Yeah. So yeah, it right. was there, and people weren't doing it. No, but, but then now that, you're is that, putting but, it into people's face of. Here, no, I don't know. It's kind of like for me, if I, this is, this is kind of going back a bit in terms of when this was sort of more of a mentality, but if you meet someone and then the first thing you do is like, look up their Facebook account or something like to me, that's weird. You shouldn't, I understand this isn't just about knowing details. This is specifically to do with safety and everything. That's why I say that should be on tin, like on Tinder itself. When you sign up to Tinder, you go through that background check and you have that record attached to your account as mm. opposed to on it needing to do this on an end of, like w- even with that that would also save everyone money because yeah, if you sign up I guess Tinder there, the, and you the do problem... the background check then it's done if tinder do if tinder do an initial background check right what's to say the person in between that period of time has not committed a crime Mm, that's true, but also and from, from the uh, an, an initial attempt. I mean, initial check. <laughs> and also, that that's probably a better way that they can give a fake number is when they're doing the initial um, uh, background check. I mean, you not not uh, at all. Like they're but, trying something. Like yeah. there's always going to be ways around it, but they're like it'll develop like I, everything. I I I like your idea better, Alexander, but I do see some flaws in it. That's the only thing. But I like the I do like the fact that they're doing this because I know people, actual people that I know that are friends that have had horrific experiences. Yeah. So um <clears throat> I think it's good if they have this option. But like, talking and about that is the um, way. That going is the way a little bit is. back. <laughs> Someone put an article in about Pepe Le Pew. Did you guys hear about the erasing Pepe Le Pew from yes. the new Space Jam 2? Yes. yes. The, yeah. Yep. They're trying to cancel Pepe Le Pew because he's seen as quite forcible. Whoa. And there was a but, scene, the specific, <clears throat> there's a specific scene that they cancelled and um, it was, he was, the lady from Jane the Virgin, Grace Santo, the actress, I guess Pepe goes to like grab her arm and then she slams him and slams him down on the bench and whatever and like pushes him and he goes flying and LeBron like catches him or something and then LeBron says, you got to ask for consent before you t- before you grab a lady's arm or something like that. But they cancelled that and she, this actress was really upset that they cancelled that scene because she has experienced stuff before and she thought that was a really good Message scene to have a message, message to have, but yeah, they cancelled it. <clears throat> yeah, Pepe, because that Pepe was the Le thing, Pew. though. They were just saying, like, they shouldn't, he just in general is a bad representation of how a man should be. Mm. But then it seems like yeah. this is this cancel has been taken completely out of context. I mean, CJ, ha- has Pe- portray, did but. Pepe Pepe Le Pew have a big impact on the way that you treated women subconsciously no. somehow? I mean, think about no. it first. Think about it. Think about it. Don't just say no because, like, do you see okay. your actions at all? Have for you my, transferred my that memory at all? from Pepe from Pepe from Pepe Le Pew is him kissing a lady's hand and arm, 
and her going, oh, no, 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 and he's still doing it. I have never done that. <laughs> 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 I've never thought about doing it. I'm just Every time. <laughs> Uh, yeah, a lady said, I'm not, you know, m- maybe this is going a bit too fast. Yeah. I hit the, I hit the brakes and put it in reverse, you know? Yeah. I Someone said... Um, try to keep, dro- keep going forward. Someone said, what about Elmer Fudd with a gun who never kills anyone or anything? What? What is that? What do you mean? Because Elmer Fudd always has a gun and she kills a shotgun and she kills... He, ne- he doesn't kill anyone. Elmer, Elmer Fudd, isn't that the woman with the shotgun? No, that's a, a pig. It's a woman. It's, it's a guy. guy. It's a guy. Oh, yeah. Elmer Fudd. Let me just see. But a funny oh, one yeah, about yeah, that, that actually, because someone was talking about the Elmer Fudd. They they talked about um, just Looney Tunes in general, the things they got away with. Like there's a scene, um, Bugs Bunny, where he's mm-hmm. playing piano in like a theatre. So he's on stage, he's playing piano, and there's this person coughing when he's like just about to go. And like he freezes, gets frustrated. He goes to go again, the person coughs. And he pulls out a gun and shoots the person. <laughs> and oh then my god. Starts playing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm not laughing because of nostalgia. <laughs> I'm laughing. <laughs> yeah. But when you look, it's, got a it's, it's, a, it's, a di- it's a different period of it's a different period of time that these are set in. But someone said I someone just, said that um, these people that are cancelling, <clears throat> um, the the cancelling the cancel culture, right? They weren't there for that period of time to can like to yeah. cancel it. So like when that there was this lady, um, she did a rap about the cancel ca- culture of trying to of Eminem. They they were trying to cancel Eminem, whatever, right? And she and like when this video started, it looked like she was gonna jump on the cancel culture. And then she just drops this mad like 24 bars about you shouldn't be able to cancel stuff that you weren't even there for that relevant time. And all this, yeah. like, and it was just, it was a wicked rap, right? I'll bring it up and I'll show you. But it, it should, if you weren't part of that time, should you cancel cultures that you weren't even part of? Like that was part of... No. Okay. Uh, anyways. That culture is there, which has enabled this culture to learn more. If that didn't happen, you, we wouldn't be right here. Little shits. Yeah. No need for little wouldn't shits. Wouldn't know as much as they do. <laughs> no need for but little I, shits. You just. <laughs> I also just think there's okay. So, there's something to be said if you're not there, that you don't you don't fully understand the context of that thing anyway. For example, that Bugs Bunny scene. I don't think anyone ever watched that and went, "Ooh, might go shoot people now." Like it's so far removed. That's not from what we thought. Yeah. Because there wasn't that issue in the world at that time. Yeah. Like, exactly. it's, you're trying to put a situation from the past in the world of today and then judge it. And it's just, that's it not how it works. You can't put 10 years ago into today. No. Mm. Culture's rapidly shifting. Mm. So we can't judge people for what they've done 10 years ago on today's standards, in my opinion. Yeah. I do th- see, I do mm. think that. This is where it get again, like nothing straightforward, is it? I do think there are certain circumstances where you can look at things as um, the tolerance level for things and what we would deem as, even in that day, it was still a bad tolerance level. And when I say that, think back to any historically bad thing that's happened to people where you can be like, well, even then... People should have known better. Yeah, like with yes. burning of witches and slavery and everything. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> but with individual isolated situations, like uh, events that are just one person does this or one thing happens like this, then I just think it's very, it's very finicky to try and. I, I, I'm I'm not talking about like huge huge issues like the Nazis or anything like that. They should be judged on what they actually did, which was horrendous, right? I'm talking about 10 years ago, you might have had an opinion on something, which you don't have today. I shouldn't be able to judge you on what you had an opinion on 10 years ago, because during that period, you have grown and developed more and learned a lot more. So your opinion would have changed. Mm-hmm. So how can I judge you for 10 years ago? 
Are we mm. back on the Kevin Hart thing? Yeah, that's exactly from <laughs> Kevin Hart. That, that's that's uh, uh, that actually is... <laughs> I, I, actually I was on the Kevin Hart thing. I was I was thinking of social media, like in in the sense where you might have posted something stupid. That's exactly what Kevin. Obviously, it wouldn't be the Kevin Hart thing. Okay. Yeah. Okay, we're kind of back on the Kevin Hart thing. So we're, uh, we're Captain <laughs> Captain Obvious and Captain Recycle. <laughs> so can I? Uh, can I bring something that's slightly adjacent to this, um, but it's social media related? Is it, it was a thought I had this week. Is it about the is it the Kevin Hart thing? Because from what it's I just not. been told, we seem it's, we seem to go back to it a bit. <laughs> it's about the freedom of speech and social media in general, which you know a lot of people. The cancel culture is big on this topic of there's certain things you can't say, you shouldn't be able to say, cancel them. And then there's the other side of it where people are like, you shouldn't police what people should say online because you need to allow every side of things to be heard so that if someone says something bad, you can say something against it. If you don't ever say anything against it, then it will just perpetuate outside of social media anyway. Whereas if you allow it to be talked about, at least you can have that conversation. Um, and so, and yeah, and they might learn from it. So, I was thinking about this this week, and I had a thought, and my thought was that, at least for me, freedom of speech on social media is such a complicated topic and such a complicated conversation because I do agree that you shouldn't just cancel people because they say something you don't agree with. At the same time, yeah. Imagine social media existed in 1930s and Hitler was on social media. Oh, There would be shit, far more Nazis that. than there ever were. Mm. Far more Nazis than there ever were. Mm. Mm-hmm. Far more deaths. Taking that context and thinking about that kind of situation, what are your guys' thoughts on the topic of freedom of speech on social media? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I know very little <laughs> about that. I'm not... <laughs> Okay, I believe some people might just be <laughs> ignorant, might be just silly, right? And if you have an open discussion about a topic, y- you might get something back from it, where you realize, like, you know what, I was wrong. Mm. So you might you might have an opinion that was stupid, and you learn something new, you learn from it. It's tricky. It helps you grow as a per- mm. person. And but if you don't feel comfortable of talking about it, because everyone's gonna. Like try to counsel you, you never learn. It is going to have those feelings inside, which yeah. is going to get worse and worse and worse. But then I don't think that they should allow like hate, hate speech or anything like that, which is still free speech. So, yes, also stuck in the middle there with you. You know, you know when you talk about uh, freedom, like I the genre that I feel like you were able to do it, and then. You you were able to say whatever is comedy. Um, I feel like that's, back that's in the gone. I know, but back in the day, you were allowed to say uh, touch on controversial topics, and the whole point is to bring it to light, but also just laugh about it because not laugh about it, but have see the lighter side of that serious conversation, right? And now that you've taken that, now you've taken laughter out of situations you can't say like you can't you got to watch what you say stand-ups have to watch what they say it makes it harder just to laugh at yourself and i feel like yeah like there were certain topics that were sa- like the like black comedians would be able to say talk about racism and talk about like dave Chappelle, right he'd always talk about how how, how ingenious is it to have a black blind kkk leader clayton bixby classic you, you know yeah. what i mean he, he he brought to light layer on layer about certain topics that were oh you can't say you can't talk about it. he's like F- i can i will talk about it and now you're getting to the point where you can't even do that in comedy don't get me wrong he he's a he's a he's a, he's a very smart guy and the way that he did it is very tasteful and there's a lot of comedians that just have just are just slapstick sort of comedians, but then you don't allow the comedians with genius to actually express themselves because they're too worried about losing their audience, which is sad. I don't know. I, don't, I feel like the only place you could do it is with, with, with stand up, and now you can't even 
You can't even say stuff with stand up. There's not many. I don't know. I so I always thought like everyone has a different way of thinking, a different way of opinion, and everyone can try to learn off each other, which would be a good thing about social media. Like I, I learn a little bit of, of Alexander, maybe he learns a little bit of me. We, we learn a little bit of you guys, and we, we help develop each other, become better humans. Mm. The way the way things are going, everyone's going to be exactly the same because they'll be too scared to have a different opinion. Yeah. Yeah. Which is which is my, my main concern. So the fact that everyone's gonna have to think exactly the same because if they don't think in the is same this, line as everyone else, is this one of the I, is this one of the things that keep you up at night? I don't think so. I think that they just won't blast it online. They'll link up. They'll be able to find That's their groups. That's worse, I reckon. They'll find their groups yeah, and they will congregate because, offline or in a private sector online and and do it that way. I don't know what's worse: having them not say uh, yeah. say it in public or hide. Okay, data sharing. Everybody hates this. This is a point of contention. Why? Well, it's not really. Everybody just hates it. Why? So data sharing. Data sharing. What's, what's wrong with it? What's so, data sharing? So, what's data sharing? So da- data when collection. You sign up, data sharing. So when you sign up on an app and it or says, collection. "Do you give permission for us oh, to share your right. data That's... with third party companies?" I don't know a single soul that, that is that wants data that to collecting, happen. not data sharing. Oh, no, there's no, the you sharing. Have to permission to share. Like, they collect it to oh. share it. Yeah, I thought you were talking about the family share on Optus. How you share your data in Optus? <laughs> I was like, "What the hell is this shit?" All right, so the collect. Yeah, okay. <laughs> There's a new plan which now enables you more gigs to do. I thought that's what we're talking about. Okay, why do people hate this? <laughs> All right. Uh, no, so um, yes, data sharing is well. Apparently, all I didn't know this apps the Apple. For any of apps to be on the App Store, they must agree to ask everybody permission to share their data. If they don't ask permission or they don't want, you know, they don't want to do that, they are not allowed to put their app on the App Store. Um, There is a new list and it tells you the worst offenders for people that share your data with third party companies. I want you to have a guess at who makes the list facebook china so okay who would you say is the number one company (laughs) yeah Uh, i don't know okay (laughs) what number what would you say is the number one company of sharing how much of the data they collect they share facebook i don't know or the percentage instagram percentage uh facebook is instagram and whatsapp i i don't know all all apps are separate all apps are separate. Instagram. Therefore, what you saying? Oh, I, I still think. Oh, maybe TikTok. Read them, Zans. So number one, Siege nailed it. Is Instagram. Instagram. Oh wow. They collect information on your purchases, your location, your contact info, your contacts, your user content, your search history, your browsing history, your identifiers, your usage data, your. I can't read that one. It's too blurry. What does that say? Diagnostics. Your blurry Your context. financial info. And they share 79% of that. Shit. 79%. Number two was what you said originally. They're Facebook. Facebook, yeah. Number three was surprising. Number three and four were really surprising for me. And five, actually, to be fair. Number three, LinkedIn. Yeah, that was. I was surprised by that. Sharing a solid fifty percent LinkedIn, the like business social media. Yeah. Oh, fuck that. Um, number four, Uber Eats. Yeah, that's a surprise. That one really fifty percent of your data. <laughs> that, that, that's that, weird. that surprises me a lot, especially the amount of times they miss deliver stuff. <laughs> <laughs> With the amount of data they're, that they're they have, they're not sharing it to the drivers. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> what is going on there? <laughs> They should be spot on 100% delivery rate. I mean, yeah. human. There's still human error, right? <laughs> and then train line was number five. And then to round out your 10. What's train line? Train line. So that's a, I use train line. It's an app for booking train tickets. It's oh, in the name. Okay. <laughs> um, it's in the. 
So round out the 10, YouTube number six, YouTube music number seven, Deliveroo number eight, Duolingo number nine, and eBay number oh, 10. No. Yeah, I'm surprised. Okay, I only know a few of these, right? Mm. <laughs> but you're also... I know Instagram because I heard... It. You're also anti-internet, man. Yeah. Yeah, but like, I know Facebook. I haven't been on in a while. Um, Instagram, I hear a lot of people about it. Like, oh, have you been on Instagram and this shit? So I'm like, oh, maybe that's number one. Um, Uber Eats? <laughs> what are they sharing? Your orders? And Deliveroo. <laughs> Emma and... Er- Emma, Emma and Ernie like their spicy food. So Uber well, Eats. I know what to do. We'll send them a cor- incorrect order of Indian. <laughs> and they'll become customers for life. Oh, are you serious? Life. CJ, you've blown my mind. Are you serious? Uh, have they got us that way? They've sent us a mistaken <laughs> Indian dish so that we was can go on Uber Eats. It was e- marketing. Oh, my. CJ, that is an actual genius response. Except for that the is fact that they didn't put the restaurant name on their... But it made us go. I didn't say it was. To I didn't say it was. We have to go Uber Eats and see <laughs> and what Indian restaurants. we did do that. We did do that. That is G- CJ. Do you work for Uber Eats? <laughs> CJ, I'm I'm, cur- I'm currently employed. He's on the marketing <laughs> team. Head of marketing. <laughs> <laughs> I could imagine CJ when you go into his room. He turns around. Yes. <laughs> and he's got his hands. Yes. How I, can I help you? I have you? a plan, <laughs> my pretties. <laughs> There is a possible new cure for our snorers out there. <laughs> yes. It is a device that sticks to your head and it gives you a shock. Well, it says it gives you a shock, but I've read elsewhere it's the vibration when you start snoring. And I've also read that if you turn on your back, it also gives you a, vibra- a vibration. Why? Because you snore more, I think, if you sleep on your back. I believe. But I don't know how it sticks okay. to your head. With a sticky tape? Mm. <laughs> Would you wear this on your head? It's like a pl- hard plastic, probably the size of a... Like a headphone case. You know the iPod <laughs> iPod Air headphone cases? Yes. That's stuck Ready. in your head. Yo. You should you you should wear it, mate. So I looked at this um I looked at this article, and the reason why this resonated with me was because I am reading at the moment um how to breathe or breath. I'm reading this book called Breath, and it's telling it's it's saying that um breathing through your mouth is ruining your health. Mouth breathers are are the worst kind of breathers. <laughs> And you should be breathing through your nose because that's how animals breathe. <laughs> that's the oh, the nose I'm is there. The nose is there for you to breathe out of. It, you, your mouth is just supplementary. Uh, to the point that we started breathing through our mouths that our that our jaws evolved to go narrower. Was it narrow or the teeth? Yeah. Because then the teeth started to get crooked because of uh, people breathing through the mouths, which was interesting. And or maybe you needed, or maybe you needed a better dentist. That's interesting. No, you don't. The, the reason why you need a dentist is because your jawline is uh, going narrow. Anyways, um, so I don't think you need. I think because I told Emma instead of um, I told Emma she needs mouth tape so that. You stop breathing through your mouth. Well, you did mention something about this whole mouth thing last week. To me, yeah, about the mouth tape. And I was like, "What are you talking about?" Uh, hold on, is Emma is Emma also a snorer? No, I told her to buy the mouth tape for me. Oh, I was gonna say because I, I was gonna say, man, no one must be sleeping. The poor kids, <laughs> they're both are letting are letting get ripped. I want to, like, I want to know, are you guys mouth government. breathers? Mouth breathers, or are you um, nose breathers? I, I've recently become a snorer. I don't understand. Are you a mouth breather? He wouldn't know because he's I don't know. sleeping. I'm a, no, when I'm no, asleep, I don't no, know what I'm doing. No, when, you, no, when you're awake. Oh. Not when you're asleep. I know when blocked. you're asleep, you're not, you don't know. <laughs> Actually, you do know. Do you wake up with dry mouth? I 
I think I'm a CJ? nose breather. CJ? No. What are you doing in your sleep? No, because of all the air. It makes your mouth dry. Does it? Are you, ser <laughs> <laughs> are you serious? If I sleep on my back, I, I snore. Yeah. If I don't, I don't snore. And I if you was a side. mouth yeah, breather me too. If I, uh, a lot more than I am now. But I became aware of it because someone told me. And I consciously <laughs> learned to breathe through which my way nose. You sleep. When you sleep. It all depends on which no, way you sleep. in general. Yeah. 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 This is interesting. Sleep orders, breathing effects, sleep, sleep disordered breathing effects, 50% of men and only 23% of women. Women. Now, do you know what it is? Though those men, they have brow, amount, uh, wives that snore. They're very, very attractive women and they've just learned to deal with it. Now, this is also <laughs> interesting. Dev has actual uh, seriously high... Sleep apnea. Sleep apnea. It's, it's not moderate. It is high. Chronic. Chronic, that's the word. Now, untreated sleep apnea can have serious life-shortening consequences, including high blood pressure, heart disease, stroke, accidents caused by falling asleep at the wheel, diabetes, depression, and more. And you've had testing and it showed chronic levels of yeah, sleep Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Because I had the rest med take home one and like I couldn't sleep with oh, all no, the no, wires no. on my... I hear you when you sleep and yeah. I hear you stop breathing. Anyways, I... I... Why do you stop breathing? Yeah. yeah. Cause like, like constantly. No, I think... Back in the old days, he didn't, he didn't stop breathing. He just snored. No, yeah, no, my, I stops. think my tongue covers my throat. That's my whole point. That's why I said that um, breathing through the nose is really important. Because even if, like, let's say your tongue, like, let's say it covers the hole, you still have your nose. Mm. That like Because they said there wasn't, um, it's not the lack of, uh, anyways, I'm going I'm to skip through what, I've, uh, uh, what I was listening to. Mm. But it's not more oxygen you need. It's more carbon dioxide, CO2 that you need in your body. That you need. That you need. To make your, um, uh, I forgot it, I forgot it, I forgot it. But it's more important to have your CO2 to at your, so you can be at peak levels. So you, because you think about it, your body will get the amount of oxygen that your body needs. Mm -hmm. Like you breathe because your body needs that amount of oxygen. But you don't breathe out all the oxygen that's necessary to breathe out. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Or yeah, not? but why don't you breathe it out? Yeah. That's because we, we, no one got taught how to breathe. <coughs> I thought breathing was just something that just happens. So we're you know, all breathing wrong. You don't need to be taught how to breathe. You just breathe. I know, right? But you're not supposed to breathe through your mouth, but you breathe through your mouth. Because my mouth is a bit congested at the moment, so I have to breathe through my mouth. And that's because you breathe through your mouth. It's it's like it's funny what I'm like. What I'm saying is the reason why your nose gets um congested is because of the lack of breathing through your nose, which is weird, right? I thought I've broken it a few times. Oh, that that could be it too, but I don't know. I was just uh like it was just interesting Do you the amount on your of back? um. No, I, s I sleep on my side. No, 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 no. It still, still, still snores, mate. He's fallen asleep in my car with the seat down, right? And he's kept me awake driving home. It's a great safety feature. But that's why. <laughs> then he's on his I'm back. I'm on my back. <laughs> I'm on my back. You he'll be, he'll be, Sometimes you're on your back. He'll be, he'll, be, uh, he'll be on his back in the car and you're being... But that's what I'm saying. Like, do like, you, you said you sleep on your side. I uh, no, yeah. Sometimes you're on your back. Yeah. So does it happen on both, back and side? I'm not sure. Maybe. I, I know it happens on your back because I've heard you in my car. Because mm. that's something that I, because I know I used to snore more than I do now because I used to sleep on my back. But I've, I'm weird. I pay attention to things. I've taught myself to sleep on my side. No, I, See, I can say. I, I sleep, sleep on my side or back. It just could happen. Mm. Sometimes it happens. I snore. Sometimes it doesn't. Mm. Well, this thing is called the Somnibel Therapy. And I guess you can get it online from Siebel Med, but you can probably look on Amazon, probably. Hmm. I reckon you but, should give it a okay. go. But what would be wanna beneficial give... for a snorer just because if it, if it keeps you on shocking him, he's not going to get any sleep. 
Mm, yeah, but he's not getting sleep as it is because he keeps waking because he keeps not breathing. No, I want to start learning how to breathe through my nose. Like, I want to stay, take my mouth shut and see how that <laughs> how that goes. Learning to breathe through <laughs> Just... your nose is a really awkward experience. It is so hard. <laughs> breathing through your nose <laughs> is so done, awkward. Have you done the test, the sleep apnea test? Yeah. When, they, when you stay at hospital overnight? No. Nah, and they nah. pump you full of oxygen? He nah. did the stay at home I stayed one at home. I want to do wires. the hospital one. There's a, there's a hospital one, mate. Yeah. Maybe do that yeah. just because... Maybe if you can't... Like, my dad used to do it, and a few relatives of mine do it, where they actually do stop breathing for like a minute. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it freaks you out. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't, yeah, like, but well, I don't like the sleep apnea one because it makes you breathe through your mouth. I want ones that... Anyways, I want to do my experiment and like try to breathe through my nose. And see how that goes. I would say... But you won't know. I would say meditate as part of your practice because mm. paying attention to breathing is one of the most awkward things just in general it's because so you can't awkward. breathe naturally when you pay attention to it. Yeah. So at 100%. least meditation will get you used to paying attention and then keeping it natural. It's funny you say that. It's funny you say that because they said that, you know, the arm... Then you know when we pick an arm... Um, oh, yeah. So it's supposed to be your breath in should be the same as your breath out and you should do it every uh, six seconds. So you go, you breathe in and go, I can't do it, but you breathe in with the, like you go, but at the same length of arm, right? Which is, it's hard to do, say arm while breathing in because it's an outward breath, right? <laughs> so, but it regulated uh. my... It regular, uh. yeah. <laughs> you got to think. Um, you can't breathe it in. <laughs> but, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. You, I, it regulated my breath out because, like, you go, um, and you're still breathing out, um, and I could do it for six seconds. And but the thing is, I'm having trouble breathing in with the arm. So I go. See, it's not the same as you're arm. You're supposed to. <laughs> it's I not thought, the way. It's nowhere near the same as arm. Like, I thought you were supposed to breathe out longer than you breathe in. You are, you are, but and you will naturally, like if, oh, not naturally. If you do arm, you will nat, uh, you will breathe out six seconds, expel air, six second, uh, six seconds worth of air. Um, and then you, you sort of in, I can, I you, can hear the like, tension of like I need to breathe. No, <laughs> no, but your, like your diaphragm is supposed yeah. to go up as well. So like uh, when you practice, it gets smoother and smoother. And I was doing it in the car. This is my thing now in the car. <laughs> like I tried to breathe in and I even tried to do circular breathing with my nose. I go, oh, that did not sound pretty. Yeah. It sounds just as good just as me. <laughs> but so you I tried switch. to do that. Yeah. I tried to switch as well. And it's it uh, the amount of energy that I picked up for going through. I don't know if it's placebo or whatever. Right. But it, it's like it helped because I had more carbon dioxide in my system, which they said is it's it's better that way. Anyways, see, my my main issue with breathing is this: um, I feel my left hand side of my nostril sucks in over air, but my right hand side doesn't really do much. Hmm. I always feel like it's quite blocked here. You can I get that cleared. How? Come over. I'll get my drill. Cotton bud. No, no, no. 12 use, mil drill bit. Uh, what are they? Douche? <laughs> douche? Is that salt douche? water? Salt water? The, th the things that they use with babies to like... Oh, yeah. Come over. I'll do it to you. I'll suck That's it out your nose. That's called an aspirator. <laughs> a <laughs> douche <laughs> is something that women put up their vajayjays. No, it's not. <laughs> no, it's not. Look it up. Look it up. Look it up. <laughs> That's why they call okay, people uh, douchebags. Uh, uh, Ernie? Oh. Ernie? Ernie? You can't put up any if you JJ douche, stuff up my it's, nose. It's, right? it's something that goes up inside, which you should not do because it's not healthy. <laughs> is that what they call right. it? A douche no, bag? No, no, for JJ. A douche I, I, is I know, just I know a, it's lot of women a shower of water. There is you can yes. vaginal douche, but that's not what it is. <laughs> you can nasal. You can also nasal. That one nasal that's douche. like that is called an aspirator. Aspirator. Yeah. How about an anal oh douche? Oh no! Like what's a? It's a what's that? Um, nose? when they clean? Stink. What did they clean? That's a col, col. That's a um. Not a colonoscopy. That's no, a different. No, no, no. That's a um. 
cologne, colo, coloss, colo. Oh, it's a douche. What I was talking about is a douche. What are you talking about? They don't look look stop looking at douche, douches. I mean, they're all different shapes, but they look like they're basically just things with a spout. Put bum cleaner. I mean, this one does say. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that one did say, that one did say vaginal douche, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And on that bomb note. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> God, you're, you're such a douche. <laughs> Not just any kind of douche. <laughs> Vaginal douche. Um, we talked about Tinder background checks, Pepe Le Pew. What's that other topic we talked about in between Pepe Le Pew? The pri- being able to do the background, and that led on to all sorts of crazy stuff. Uh, we talked about uh, CJ's job history. <laughs> we talked about the worst data sharers, and not not Optus data sharing. We talked about. A new snoring aid and... Don't forget hashtag freedom pineapples. That's not going to make the cut. Um, Why? That was excellent. Uh, <laughs> thank you, CJ. <laughs> See what, that was some of my best stuff. See when he, you know when he sneezes, he's lying. Pinocchio's oh, nose grows. He didn't he even sneezes. just say it was good. It was excellent. <laughs> he just reminded me sneezing into his hand washing with your chicken. Ah, yes, chicken. After your poo, chicken. wash your hands and then splash your That's chicken. right. CJ, <laughs> yes. are you going to make a sandwich after you wash your hands? Hey, do you feel safe? No. That's right. you got to wait until the psych- no. like psychological barrier leaves. Nah, I'm just going to wait until tomorrow morning when I'm hungry. Oh. Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, thanks for the conversation, boys and girls. I hope you enjoyed. Ciao. Bye. 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 Arrivederci.